Settling is not an option for Everything me. I desire is already mine. What if you can have it all? <laughs> because every day is for the girls. Hello, hello. Welcome back to another episode of For the Girls. I'm your host, Victoria Alario. And today, we're talking about boundaries. We're gonna get really into it. And I'm actually like pretty surprised that I don't have an episode exclusively around and about boundaries already. I thought I did because I know I talk about them so much. I talk about self-care. I talk about having boundaries. I talk about putting yourself first and being selfish with yourself as a form of self-care and self-love and all of these sort of things. And I feel like it always like attributes to even like Dear Victoria questions, which we do have one. So I'm excited because it's been a while since I've had a Dear Victoria sub submission, but I also feel like I haven't really like promoted them in a while. So let me just put that out there before I keep going. If you have a situation where you need advice on, you want to vent about, you want to talk about, I do offer a segment, a Dear Victoria segment, where you can send me your situations. I try, I, I really do ask that you girls try to keep it as condensed as possible because there have been some girls who have sent me like four page emails, like novels upon novels upon novels, giving me like every bit of context over the past four years of their toxic relationship. And then all of that to say is they just end it with like, so what do I do? I'm like, about which part? <laughs> so try to keep it like as short and sweet as you possibly can. But I would love to offer advice to any and all of you. So email me. My email is victoria.forthegirlspodcast at gmail.com. Make sure that you make the subject say Dear Victoria. This way you don't get lost in the shuffle because I get tons of emails there in regards to like brands and guests and all that. So if as long as I see that it says Dear Victoria, you will get immediately filed into my Dear Victoria folder. And then I'll go through. And if it's a, you know, an appropriate submission, then I will definitely use it for an upcoming episode wherever it seems fit whatever if the topic applies to that situation I will definitely include it I'm excited to have one today at the very end of this episode and it also kind of inspired me to do like let's talk more about boundaries like in particular so yeah I was looking through my episodes and I was searching the word boundaries and nothing came up like I don't have any episode titled boundaries so I'm like holy shit we got to get that out there we got to do this so I'm really excited to get into it what i think that boundaries really starts with is having a true sense of self and there's all different layers and levels of the self there's self-love self-care self-reflection self-awareness self-esteem and i think in order to really be able to understand what your boundaries are you have to know what your needs are and understanding your needs comes from simply understanding yourself. The more self-awareness you have, the more that you can reflect on yourself, the, more, the higher your self-esteem is. All of these things allow you to really know like what makes me feel good, what makes me feel bad, and what am I going to do about that? Like I have this knowledge of the self, now how will I use that knowledge? What will I do with it? And ultimately people who have, people who are strong, you know, in all of these levels of the self, people who have a really good personal relationship with themselves and have just in general a lot of self-love, they tend to have more self-awareness, period. Like the more you love yourself, the more you are aware of yourself, the more real and honest you can be with yourself. So when someone who's full of self-love and self-awareness, you know, operates on a daily basis, they're really making their decisions based on having the true understanding of what they think, what they feel, and what they want. A lot of people don't do that. A lot of people struggle with external validation. A lot of people struggle with people pleasing. A lot of people struggle with anxiety. Honestly, in general, this is a big one. Like if you really don't trust yourself, you don't really trust your gut. Like listen, women have an intuition. Well, I think people in general, everybody has an intuition, but women have a very, 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 very strong sense of gut feelings, intuition. It, it's, we feel it. We can't avoid it. It's in our gut. What happens is when we feel something in our gut and our intuition is telling us one thing, those gut instincts, if we do struggle a little bit with anxiety and overthinking and people pleasing and putting everybody else first and wanting to make everybody else happy, 
we don't just decide from there. It's not like, okay, we get the gut feeling, we know what our intuition is telling us, and then we just decide. What happens is we get that feeling, but now everything else comes into play. We start overthinking, and now that feeling works its way up. And now imagine that feeling being in your stomach, and it's working its way up, working its way up. Now it's in your chest, working its way up, working its way up. Now it's at the face, working its way up, whoop, boop, 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 boop. And now it's in your head. And now you're thinking, you're thinking, you're thinking. There's a difference between acting and making decisions based on what you feel versus acting and making decisions based on what you think. Because what we think is not always true. A lot of things come into our heads. A lot of things blur our thought process. Sometimes our compass you know, is off and it starts to like spin around a little bit because something someone said to you once gets into your head. You think about what would this person say that gets into your head. You think, I don't know, maybe not, maybe not. I always say like whatever comes to you first, whatever you feel first, that's what you should go with because everything else after that is just simply you overthinking. It's just simply a, a, Taking one thing that could be crystal clear and then smudging it with your fingers and now all of a sudden it's blurry. You need to wipe it. You need like an eyeglass cleaner and you need to wipe it and get it crystal clear again so that you could finally see through it again. And so those things that blur our vision tend to have a big effect and a big impact on our decision making and like I said, on what we think, feel, and want. So examples would be boundaries. That's a big one and that's why we're talking about it today. Standards, desires, values, morals. And now the knowingness of all of this really does come from our self-awareness. Like I said, what is self-awareness? It is simply how a person consciously or maybe even subconsciously knows and understands who they are. It's our understanding of our character It's our understanding of our feelings, our motives, our desires, our needs, like I said. So when you have self-awareness, you are able to focus on those things. You're able to focus on yourself and you're able to really identify how your actions, your thoughts, or your emotions do or do not align with your internal standards. Because there's a difference. There's external self-awareness and there's internal self-awareness so there's public outwardly self-awareness and then there's uh, private internal self-awareness these are like two separate broad categories so now what's the difference between the two what am i even saying first things first private self-awareness this is what occurs behind closed doors These are the things like our thoughts and emotions. This is being clear on those things. It's being clear on what our values are, which ultimately increases the likelihood of making choices and decisions that we end up being happy with instead of having regrets and wishing we did something else. The more that we know what we really want, then the more likely we are to make decisions based on that. So having private self-awareness is having that like alone time with yourself it doesn't necessarily have to mean like sitting in your room alone in the dark and being like who am I what do I want it's like having that internal time with yourself and it could be whether we're alone or not but it's really noticing things about ourselves understanding our true emotions it could very much be in public say that you're around people and someone says something to you that makes you feel a certain type of way then right there you sit with that feeling and you like notice that thing about yourself. You notice and understand this made me feel a certain way. This upset me. That right there is still private self-awareness because it's you internalizing something. So this is like your emotional awareness of the self. This is you being able to get into your head and get into your heart and say, here's what I think and here's what I feel. Now, public self-awareness that outward self-awareness. This is what you do with that knowledge. So this is how or if at all you remain true to yourself. Do you take what you know privately and then implement it publicly? When you have a lack of that, if you can't stay true to yourself, you basically are becoming like a victim 
to people pleasing. You are a victim to the pressure to conform to other people maybe even societal sta- standards and like what what people say is right and wrong and what's mainstream and normal in like just the grand scheme of life um or you know it's that need for external validation or maybe it comes from anxiety like i mentioned before or maybe it just all around comes from having a bad relationship with yourself and having a low sense of self having low self esteem low self love low sense of self-awareness and low sense of reflection you don't really have or implement self-care so if you're like low in all of those things and you don't really feel that confident you don't really feel great about yourself maybe you have a little bit of anxiety maybe you're an overthinker maybe you're a people pleaser then you're really not going to stay true to what you felt internally with that emotional self-awareness this is your time when you are in those public settings, when you are being tested for you to really implement your boundaries and your standards. Like dating is always a prime example for this. A lot of girls in dating tend to say what their standards are. And they're like, yeah, I want this and I want that. And this is my standards, blah, blah, blah. But then they question why they're not getting treated that way. Why am I not receiving these things that are aligned with these standards I say I have? And then when I can start to peel back the layers and really dig into the situation and ask questions, I I find out the answer 100% of the time. It's simply because you accept these things that are lower than your so-called standards. 100% of the time, it's simply because you lack being firm in your standards. You lack being firm in your boundaries. Guess what, girls? It is not possible for somebody to overstep your boundaries. It is not possible for somebody to disrespect your boundaries. Maybe they can try to, but if your boundaries are strong enough, if you if these are your requirements, then somebody even attempting to disrespect them or overstep them is going to be removed right away. They're not going to be able to make it through. They're not going to be able to make it past because you're going to say, I won't accept this. I don't have room for this. It's not happening. So the stronger you are internally, and then the more confident you are and the higher your self-esteem is, then the stronger you will be externally. Don't be that person who's journaling at home and writing down, this is what I want. This is what I think. This is what I need. But then the second somebody else comes into the picture, you value that person's presence so much. You value the attention they give you so much that now your own insecurity comes out and takes over just because somebody else is in the picture and now everything else goes out the window. Don't do that to yourself. Stay strong in that public and external self-awareness and stay true to what you know your heart and your soul needs. Practice saying no, okay? This is a big deal. If you wanna get good at really implementing your boundaries, this is what you gotta do. You gotta say what you mean and you gotta mean what you say. You say yes when you mean yes and you say no when you mean no. The amount of times that people say yes when what they want to say is no, like rattles my brain. Why are we agreeing to things? Why are we permitting things? Why are we excusing things? Why are we making room for things that we don't want, that we know we don't want. You have to practice saying no. And you have to be honest with those things too. Even down to like your friend calling you and talking shit or gossiping with you when you don't want that negative energy in your life. You have to say to your friend, I don't want to talk about this right now. I just don't have the energy for it. Quite frankly, I don't care. I used to have people like that in my life who were just negative, negative, negative. And like, I felt like I couldn't even have a regular conversation with them because everything was negative. Everything was gossipy. Everything was about somebody else. And what I noticed that a lot of us tend to do instead of being honest is like weasel our way out of situations and trying to do it like carefully so that we don't like hurt anybody's feelings. Meaning like your friend calls you up and is talking shit and is being gossipy, something you don't want to be involved in, you don't want to be a part of, and you just say, oh, listen, somebody's calling me right now. Let me, let's talk later. I have to go. I have to pick up this phone call. And you hang up and that's how you get out of the dynamic. As opposed to 
being honest and saying to your friend, listen, I really don't want to be involved. I like this person. I don't, re I really don't want to talk shit about them. I really don't want to get like caught up in this. I'm sorry, but like you really just can't come to me about this. It, it kind of makes me uncomfortable. Then guess what will happen? You know, if you go either option A or option B, the two different things I just said, option A saying, oh, listen, somebody call me. I have to go. Let's talk about this later. That person will talk about it with you later. It's going to come up again because you didn't implement the boundary. You didn't tell them you have to stop bringing this to me. You didn't tell them this does not feel good to me. I don't want to have this conversation. You told them someone's calling me. I'm busy. Let me call you back and we'll talk about this later. So now that person's going to find you later and they're going to bring it up again. And you're going to have to keep finding your way out of this situation as opposed to if you went option B and said, I don't appreciate this conversation or whatever, that person would never bring this back to you again. Why would they? You just told them not to. You just told them, I don't want to hear it. So now this is what I mean when I say people can't possibly overstep or disrespect your boundaries because what would happen is if you told that person straight up, no, I don't want to be a part of this conversation. Stop bringing it to me. And then they tried to again. Guess what? you would tell them, okay, listen, I can't talk to you then. Like, I already told you how I felt about this. If you're going to keep bringing it up, then we cannot speak. Like, you have to respect my wishes. You have to respect what I want. You have to respect what I'm asking of you. If that person is deliberately not respecting you, then they get removed. You don't continue with them. Maybe they tried to push your boundaries, but you cannot let them. It is on you to not let people push your boundaries. The issue is that, like I said before, people are people pleasers. People seek external validation. So let's stop. You do not need external validation from anyone or anything. The only person who could validate you is me. No, I'm just kidding. Is you. Is you. I oh, It's actually, I made that joke because it's funny. I always ask like my clients, my coaching clients. If you girls don't know, I do confidence coaching. Just to clarify what I'm referring to. But I always ask my clients, who is the one and only person who can validate your feelings, your needs, all of the above? And they're like, they think about it and then they're like, you? I'm like, well, girl, do you really think that that's what I'm saying? Do you think that I think I'm Jesus? I am not, girl, okay? Only God can judge. Other than that, only you can judge yourself. Only you can validate yourself, not me, okay? I am not putting that power in my hands. Please do not do that to me. Um, so it is quite funny because they like think too hard about it, but that's exactly what I just said before. Don't overthink anything. Don't think too hard about it. And, and actually I didn't even realize this. It goes back to that main point that I said, whatever comes to you first, whatever that gut instinct is, that's always your answer. Trust that and stick with it. Whenever I tell them, no, it's not me. It's you. They're like, that's what I was going to say, but I thought that was wrong. And, and what do you think I say? Exactly. Trust yourself. The reason why you keep d getting into these situations is because you don't trust yourself. You doubt yourself. You're not listening to your gut instinct. You're not listening to your intuition. You overthink. You got that first immediate instinct, but then you let it travel up to your brain too quickly. And then you got stuck overthinking about it. And then you came out with a totally different answer, even though you knew the answer was wrong. But you said it anyway because you thought, maybe that's what she's looking for maybe that's the right answer when all along you could have trusted your own answer and that simply would have been it so only you can validate yourself let's go back there so when it comes to external validation you need to really pay attention to the people that you're putting this much power you know on because for the most part it's people that you just simply don't want to step on their toes. When you really think about it, it's not even like this is someone that you, I mean, maybe sometimes it is. Maybe sometimes it is someone that you really, really value and respect. But for the most part, it's not someone that you like really, truly value and respect. It's someone that you're just like, I know how they are. So it's just easier if I let them have their way. I know how they react and I don't want to hear it. It's just easier if I tell them they're right. It's just easier if I let things go the way that they want them to go because I just don't feel like arguing with them. That's what happens most of the time when we fall into this people pleasing energy. It's because we simply don't want to step on this person's toes. Okay. Not a way to live. Let people live with whatever delusional story fits them best. So if you telling 
somebody know is going to make them be mad at you and make you be the bad guy in their story, let them. So what? Let them live with whatever delusional story fits them best. You are not responsible in any way, shape, or form for anyone's distorted perception of you. You need to stand firm in your own light and in your own truth. That's it. When you know what you know, there is no need to entertain what they think. Because realistically, why would it matter? Why would it matter what they think? Because they're going to tell other people? Okay, again, and so what? Let them. If it's untrue, then you know it's untrue. So why do you need to explain yourself to other people? If anyone believes untruths about you, then that's on them. That's not on you. Let people live with whatever delusional story fits them best. That's the third time I said it and I will say it 10 more times if I have to. If people believe untruths about you, that is not on you. That says a lot more about them than it does about you. Clearly they don't know you as well as you would like them to and clearly they don't know you as well as they should. So if somebody has a distorted perception of you, that is not your problem. That is their problem. I've always said that even since I was younger, like what people say about me is their business, not mine. So don't tell me. I hate when people would tell me like something negative somebody said about me. Unless it's something that I like really needed to know. If it's someone that like I trusted with a secret and then they went and told my secret. Okay, then sure. Tell me so that I know never to tell that person again. But if it's just that person like talking about me in, in a negative way, not my business, not my problem. I don't want to hear it. I don't need to talk to that person or about that person. I don't care. It's as simple as that. And so, like I said, realistically, why would it matter? It, it truly doesn't matter. Now, here's what does matter. Paying attention to the people that you allow in your orbit. If you're going to be really implementing boundaries, you need to pay attention to the way people respect you or not, or the way they don't respect you. You need to require those in your circle to respect you, to respect your time, to respect your wishes, to respect your boundaries. Example, you have a friend in your life who's constantly canceling on you, constantly rescheduling at the last minute. No. Guess what we're not doing with that friend anymore? Making plans. You are not going to give that friend another Saturday night of yours where you have this friend. Let's say you have a friend who say she's single and like loves, loves, loves to like go out to like meet guys and be around guys and say you're in a relationship. And so hanging out with you is a little bit differently. Like if you're going to get together on a Saturday night, maybe you're like, yeah, I'll, you know, get dinner and maybe some drinks, but I don't really want to go to the club. I don't want to stay out till 2 a.m. And this friend is someone who wants to go out with her like going out friends. She wants to stay out and drink all night and which she's absolutely entitled to do. But she prior she prioritizes that over prioritizing spending time with you. Even though she'll, she'll let you book her on your calendar and she'll let you block time off for her. But when it comes to her, she has no problem wasting, you know, your time. And so with that, imagine you have a friend like that where... You have these plans for a Saturday night and then Saturday rolls around and you're like getting ready, whatever, and then they cancel or they reschedule. And now you're sitting there wasting your time. This used to happen to me all the time. I used to have friends always do that. Um, well, I can't say friends, uh, plural. It used to happen with one friend, someone I'm not friends with anymore. But she used to do stuff like that to me where I would be like, ready to go out like we had the plans I'm like you know all organized for this night like I don't have plans with other people I have nothing else going on it's too late at this point and then she's like oh I'm so sorry would you kill me if I had to cancel I have to do xyz like by the end of like say that that happened like three or four times with her which honestly I'm probably being generous it probably happened like six or seven times that was it like not friends anymore, never made plans again, never spoke again. Like you don't respect my time, which means you don't respect me. So now I have a boundary up around me and my time and my schedule and you will no longer have access to it. That is it point blank period. Or something else to do with like, again, respecting your time, your boundaries, your wishes, whatever. Say that you have somebody who thinks what you want is not a big deal. 
which I might save a little bit more about this for the Dear Victoria segment because this actually pertains to it. Like say that you're expressing your needs to someone, your wants, you're expressing your feelings to someone and they just don't get it or they don't want to get it. They don't want to see it. And they just think what you want is simply not a big deal. It's not that important. Disrespectful of your wishes. Again, boundary needs to go up around that. But I'm going to get more into that when we do the Dear Victoria segment. Or someone just not understanding your choices. Like say that you do set a boundary around something. Say that you set a boundary around communication with a person that your friend is also friends with. And they can't respect that. They don't understand your choices. Oh, they didn't kill somebody. Oh, you know what's a perfect example? It's Vanderpump Rules. If you've been watching Vanderpump, if you are if you just watched the last season, I think this was season 11, look at what everybody just did to Ariana Maddox with Tom Sandoval. They broke up. He cheated. He did like the ultimate, you know, cheating, scummy thing on the face of the earth. And now Ariana, as she should, set boundaries around that. And... What was Lala doing and Sheena doing all season trying to get her to break the boundary? Not understanding her choices. Ariana didn't want to film with them. They were trying to force her. Ariana didn't want to talk to him. They were trying to force her. They were trying to completely overstep and disrespect her boundaries and doing that to benefit themselves. Lala's whole situation was like, oh, but if if Ariana doesn't film with him, if Ariana doesn't talk to him, then we have no show. And then I lose my job and the show must go on. So Ariana must drop her boundaries. I don't understand what she wants because this is stupid. This is a show. This is work. She has to do it. No, she doesn't have to do anything she doesn't want to do. And you understanding or not understanding her choices is not her problem. It's not her job. So if you can't respect that, then you can't be in my life. And that's what the result seemingly has been between Ariana and Lala. I don't think that they're friends anymore because of it. And I very much applaud Ariana for for endorsing that, for, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? For, you know, instilling that and implementing that. You cannot be in my life if you don't understand my choices. And you also can't be in my life if you think you're entitled to understanding my choices. You either get them or you don't. And if you don't, then buy. So that's a prime example. Somebody not understanding like why you set this boundary and then they try to change your mind. They try to force you out of it. That was a prime example. So you could put yourself in your own situation in that. But think about the Lala, Ariana, and Tom Sandoval of it all. Tom cheated. Ariana set boundaries. Lala wasn't understanding it. So that's it. Now Tom and Lala both had to go. (laughs) And this is why you need to really have that strong sense of self-awareness. Because if you don't, being around the wrong environment and being like too wrapped up in it and getting really sucked into it will have you falling victim to the wrong people making you forget your worth this is what I was saying before when I was saying that public self-awareness is how you stay true to yourself so if you get too wrapped up in the wrong people the wrong environment then you're not going to be able to stay true to yourself this is why it's so important to make sure you stay in control of your environment and your support system matches the life that you desire for yourself You have to make sure that your circle, your support system, your people, the ones that you invite into your life, invite into your home, invite into conversations with you, understand and match everything you want for yourself. Your standards, your growth, your boundaries, your choices, again, your time, your wishes, all of the above. What Ariana did so gracefully was putting her peace first and conserving her energy. Everybody was asking about like how on the reunion she wasn't screaming. She wasn't losing her cool. And she was like, I conserve my energy. Like she was talking about it in an interview. She was just like, I'm emotionally mature. So I don't need to go crazy on people and shit on people and, you know, tear everybody apart to get my point across. As long as I know my worth, as long as I know myself, then I could put that first and I could put my peace first and embody confidence 
rather than letting everybody else you know pull something else out of me and and affect me not saying at all that this is the stuff ariana said this is what i'm saying these are my words but she ultimately was saying like i'm emotionally mature enough like i don't need to tear people down but in other words in my words in vic's terms that's what she's saying i'm putting my peace first and i'm embodying confidence i'm not gonna let anybody else make me step out of who i am and who i want to be true to me and when you can embody that this is when you will discover true peace, true confidence from within. When certain things don't affect you the way they used to, when certain things don't bother you the way they used to, when certain things don't make you angry and get you like riled up and acting out of line, when that no longer happens and you really step into that maturity and emotional maturity, that is when you really discover true peace and true confidence. And... It also allows you to see like to no longer feel bad if somebody gets mad at you for instilling these things because in the past you know if you're a people pleaser or maybe you are a reformed a recovered people pleaser say in the past you made a decision and then somebody got mad at you for implementing those boundaries and making that decision and then you you changed your mind because then you felt bad because you didn't want people to be upset with you. Like I said, that external validation. Now all of a sudden you're like, oh, I can't. I, I can't have to change my mind. I can't do it because I don't want people to be upset with me. Let me make something very, very clear to you. The only people who get mad at you when you set boundaries are those who benefit from you having none. So if somebody gets mad at you for implementing a boundary, all that should tell you is, this person was benefiting from me having no boundaries, which means this person was benefiting from me not prioritizing myself, not putting myself first, not focusing on self-love and self-care. This person was benefiting at the cost of my peace. Why would I now feel bad for them and change everything like that I'm feeling and thinking and wanting to satisfy them? No wrong okay instead now you stay away from those people stay away from the people who see you as being difficult stay away from the people who tell you you're asking for too much or you're doing too much stay away from people who see you as arguing when you are simply just communicating you're communicating your standards you're communicating your boundaries you're communicating your feelings how many girls can relate to expressing yourself and expressing your feelings and then just feeling so unheard i've been there and i'm sure a lot of you can too you're like i it's like when um oh my god why did this just come to my head you know the miley cyrus song um wrecking ball yeah wrecking ball when she's like i never meant to start a war i just wanted you to let me in I mean, I was like, what, four? No, I'm just kidding. But I was young when that song came out. I don't remember what year it was, but it was probably more than 10 years ago, maybe like 12 years ago. So I was like a, maybe an early teen, whatever it was. I, I was young, okay? And I didn't really appreciate or understand the lyrics to that song until I got older. Then like I listened to Wrecking Ball a few years ago. And well, I listen to it all the time. <laughs> I listen to Miley all the time. Old Miley, Jonas Brothers, you girls know me. And that song, when I heard it once a few years ago, that lyric, I mean, I never meant to start a war. I just wanted you to let me in. Really resonated with me in the in a sense that, like I just said, like you're trying to express your feelings, but it turned into an argument. Like that, that wasn't what I wanted. I just wanted you to hear me. I just wanted you to understand where I was coming from. Why are you mad now? Why do you think I'm arguing? Stay away from people like that. If somebody makes you feel or tries to gaslight you into thinking that you are starting an argument for simply communicating those boundaries and feelings, you're draining yourself. You're depleting your energy. You have to step away from that. You're draining yourself every single time that you engage in this type of confrontation and conversation and every single time that you accept something and, and you know entertain these fights or whatever – that don't feel right to you that don't sit right with you any time that you accept something that isn't okay with you or for you you're draining yourself 
and you're depleting your energy and you need to set boundaries around that. I refuse to engage in XYZ. I refuse to over explain myself about XYZ period. So again, the only people who will have that reaction, the only people who will get mad at you when you're trying to do this are the people who benefit from you having no boundaries at all. And that should tell you something. And I know that a lot of you are going to need to hear this because a lot of you do feel bad and you do really prioritize being too nice to people. But let me make something crystal clear to you girls. Having boundaries does not make you mean. It doesn't. Being true to yourself and putting yourself first, even if that means having to make others take a back seat and put them on the back burner, still does not make you mean. And guess what? Lacking boundaries does not make you nice. We tend to think it does. Like the, the less we prioritize ourselves, the, le- the more that we lack boundaries, the nicer we will be to other people. It doesn't mean that and it doesn't make you that. It just simply makes you a people pleaser. Now let's reframe our mindsets And shift our mindset to say, I want to focus on being kind, not nice. My priority is being a kind person, not a quote unquote nice person. There's a difference between the two. Kindness is an other centered behavior pattern where you're acting in the best interest of other people. Niceness is a self-centered behavior pattern where you're acting in a pleasing manner for your own benefit. And the benefit that you get out of it is appearing or seeming nice to other people. It's the way that you want people to perceive you, the way that you want people to view you. So that's the benefit. Like, oh, well, what would be the benefit for me of being nice? The benefit is that no one's going to think about you or talk about you as being a mean person. No one's going to say, oh, she's selfish and blah, blah, blah. Everyone's going to say, oh my God, You know, that girl, that Jennifer, she is just so freaking nice. She bends over backwards to everybody all the time. She never tells me no. She does anything I need, anything I ask. She is just so nice. That's how you want people to see you and perceive you. Acts of kindness, not niceness, kindness come from the soul. It's who you genuinely are. It has nothing to do with how people see you or perceive you. Kindness is who you genuinely are from within. While being nice is how you want others to view you and what you want to be known as. So that's why sometimes they say your meanest friend is your realest friend. You ever see that stuff when it's like everybody has that one friend who's so mean but she's so real and she's the best friend you'll ever have. Like the friend that has your best interest at heart is always your meanest friend. Yes, absolutely. Sometimes to the point where you might not even want to discuss the problem you're having with your boyfriend with that friend because you know they're going to give it to you straight. You know that friend is going to tell you what you need to hear, not what you want to hear. So when it comes to fighting with your boyfriend, you confide in your nicer friend who lets you think like, girl, that man definitely loves you. Even though he won't ask you, you know, for commitment, even though he won't ask you you know to be your boyfriend to be his girlfriend uh whatever after nine months of this talking stage he definitely really likes you whereas your mean friend is gonna be like that man doesn't like you that man doesn't want to commit with you to you you've been talking for nine months like that's it if you're talking to someone for nine months and they don't ask you to be your girlfriend their girlfriend by now that's it like it is what it is so sometimes you don't want to go to that mean friend But the point is that mean friend is your honest friend and that is your kind friend. That is your real, true lifer. That is your best friend. And you know it. The other friend is just nicer to your face. They might even talk shit behind your back. They might even be telling their other friends like, this bitch is crazy. But to your face, they're like that Delulu friend. So you could always go to them to to make yourself feel a little bit better. So kindness unfortunately may sometimes look like hurting someone's feelings with the truth because you respect that person enough and you personally have enough integrity in your character to be honest and most importantly you're consistent with it 
because you're consistent with what you say to their face and behind their back. You have good intentions. That's what kindness is. And you always do the right thing, even if it's the harder thing to do. Even if it's really hard to make that decision, you make that decision anyway. Because like I said, you have integrity and you're honest and you communicate clearly with people. You're not going to manipulate. You're not going to gaslight. You're not going to like intentionally hurt people's feelings. You're just going to be clear and respectful to people. And you're also, when you have that true kindness, thinking of like that whole friend situation, you have real loyalty. You know you can rely on a person who is kind. You know that you could always depend on them to give it to you straight, to be there for you, whatever the case is. As opposed to the person who's like, I'm too nice. I'm too nice to say no. I'm too nice to do that. I'm too nice to hurt their feelings. Meanwhile, it's like you'll talk shit about this person behind their back. You'll complain about this situation behind their back. You'll tell me, oh, I should have said no. I should have said no. But I said yes because I'm too nice. And then the question is, to who? Who are you too nice to? It doesn't make you nice to the to say that you told somebody yes when you wished you told them no. That does not make you nice. And you're also not being nice to the most important person here, yourself. Who are you being too nice to when you compromise your happiness for someone else's? You are not being ha- nice to yourself. And that is the priority. What you're basically saying is, I let people walk all over me. I'm dishonest because I don't want to hurt people's feelings with the truth. I'm a people pleaser so that everybody can be happy even if I'm not. Guess what? People pleasing energy is doormat energy. People pleasing energy is making sure everyone else is satisfied and content even if it's at the cost of your peace, your happiness, your sanity, your needs, And your boundaries. And those should never be the cost of making other people happy. And if that makes you selfish, then so be it. Because selfishness is powerful when it's executed properly. Not if you're doing bad things to people. Not if you're screwing people over. But if you are putting yourself first and you are prioritizing your own self-care, then that shit is powerful. You will become the best version of yourself when you do that. Selfishness is allowing yourself to outgrow people who no longer serve you. Selfishness is allowing yourself to say no when you mean no. Selfishness is declining plans that you don't want to go to or declining being around people that you don't want to be around. Selfishness is putting your needs, your desires, your standards, your values, your morals, and your boundaries first before others. And if that is what's best for you, then that is self-care. And sometimes doing what's best for you is simply all you need to do in order to practice self-care. So now let's get into today's Dear Victoria submission because it is right on target, right on topic. And then I'm going to like get into a little bit more of what I was saying before about like someone thinking what you want isn't a big deal. That's like part of this answer. So here we go. Dear Victoria, Do you have any advice around setting boundaries in a relationship? For example, following an ex. My boyfriend and his ex dated for a few years. They broke up a while ago and they didn't end on the worst terms. So they never blocked or unfollowed each other. It's been years. My boyfriend thinks it's such a big deal to unfollow her and doesn't want to do that. To me, it's not going to be that serious on her end, but it matters to me. Why would she care? And why does he care if she does care? They've been broken up for years. She will probably just unfollow him back. Or I even told him he can also remove her as a follower so that they both don't follow each other at all. I'm his girlfriend now and I don't need them. I don't need to have them still connected to each other in any way. And I feel like he's putting her feelings before mine, which I don't even understand because again, I don't think she'd even care. If it matters to me, that should be enough. Okay, there you go. That last sentence is all I need to tell you. If it matters to you, that should be enough. Period. And there should be no argument around this. Because first of all, you said it yourself. You feel like he is putting her feelings before mine. 
you feel that way because he is. He's literally telling you, I'm willing to hurt your feelings. I'm willing to disrespect your needs and desires because I don't want to hurt her feelings and I don't want to make her feel some type of way. First of all, yeah, why would she care? They have been broken up for years. Now, I don't know how long these two people have been together, but she's saying, she said a couple times, it's been years, it's been a long time. So you're together, you're clearly in an established relationship. It doesn't seem like you started dating five five seconds ago. And even if you did, it wouldn't matter because a girlfriend is a girlfriend no matter how long you've been together. But besides that, you're in this established relationship, period. You are the priority. You come first. If he doesn't see that or understand that, then girl, I don't know how you could even be in that situation. I don't know how you could even be in that relationship. It should be a simple question or request. And then they just say, oh yeah, like, sorry, we never unfollowed each other in the past. I didn't think that it actually mattered because it didn't matter to me. But if it matters to you, then sure, I will unfollow her. Because first of all, it's out of sight, out of mind. You don't need your boyfriend to constantly see his ex-girlfriend on his page. Like if her stories are always coming up or her posts are always coming up, I'm not saying it's going to make him want to get back with her. I'm not saying it's going to make him miss her or like her, but she is still going to be in his mind because she is in his sight. She's right there out of sight, out of mind. If they unfollowed each other, if they were not connected in any way whatsoever, her name wouldn't even be brought up in your relationship. Her, She would never come up again in conversation because there's no connection. There's no reason for her to come up. You're not like seeing over his shoulder him on Instagram and then her face pops up. Like this wouldn't even be a situation. So quite frankly, he should just be that much easier at removing her because then it's removing an entire argument. It's removing this entire conversation. And what's better than that? The best thing for you guys is to have a healthier dynamic where you're not talking about his ex who the fuck wants to talk with their boyfriend about his ex like I know I don't I literally never even have it's just like never a conversation for me because that's just it like you're not connected there's no reason to talk about it or her if if they're not connected if they are then maybe it's going to come up more but again out of sight out of mind there's literally nothing to talk about There's no connection there. You don't need to keep tabs on each other's lives. You don't need to know when the other person is on vacation, when the other person is at a birthday party. You don't need to know when that person is getting in and out of relationships or having family situations go on. Like what? Why do you need to follow each other? You're still going to write to each other like, tell your mom happy birthday. Like, no, there's just no need to have that there. There's no need to have that inside look on each other's lives anymore because you are removed from that person's life. Secondly, if you're asking the question, why is it such a big deal? Why is it such a big deal? It's not a big deal. Like, I don't need to unfollow her. Like, stop making a big deal out of this certain thing. Then why can't you just do it? If it's not a big deal, if it doesn't matter that you're still following her, if it doesn't mean anything, then why can't you just unfollow? It's that simple. And that really like goes back to that point that I was saying like pay attention to the way that people respect you and the way that they do or do not like think that what you want is not a big deal if somebody makes you feel that what you you need is not a big deal that's a red freaking flag because guess what it doesn't need to be a big deal it just needs to be something that bothers you even if it's small, even if you sat here and said, I really don't know why this bothers me, but it does. It's really not a big deal, but it affects me. It hurts me. And it makes me feel a certain way that I don't appreciate feeling. So I would, it would help me and make me feel better if you would unfollow her. Like it doesn't have to be a big deal. How about that? It just is something that upsets you. And that is enough. Like you said, if it matters to me, that should be enough. Exactly. So if he's going to make you feel like it's not a big deal, then question him. Well, then if it's not a big deal, why can't you just do it? And also, if it matters to me, big deal or small, then why is that not enough for you? Why can you not put me before your ex? Why can you not put my feelings before your ex? You realize she is not with you. I am. I am with you. Your ex following you or not following you or are you following her or not following her on Instagram is not affected 
maybe for 0.5 of a second, she could look at her phone and say, oh, that fucker unfollowed me. But guess what? She's going to go right back to her life and nothing about it will change. Whereas me, I'm going to be thinking about this. It's going to be affecting me. I'm going to be the one who this carries over into tomorrow and the next day. This is not going to end until you make me feel better about it. So now the question is, are you able to understand that or are you not? Are you able to give me reassurance or are you not? Are you able to validate me or are you not? Can you just not respect me? Is that just the situation? Do you just not want to see where I'm coming from? Are you just refusing to understand? Do you enjoy invalidating my feelings? Like what is it? Why am I begging for the bare minimum? Why am I fighting for like common sense right now? Why am I fighting for something that should be so obvious? If it's this obvious to me, why is it not obvious to you? And have that real conversation. Put him on the spot. Challenge him the way he's been challenging you. And to me, this is like a, a, a non-negotiable. This is a deal breaker. Because it goes beyond Instagram. I hate when people are like, it's just Instagram. It's not that serious. It's just Instagram. It's not just Instagram. It is the bigger picture. It's what I'm actually asking you. I'm asking you to prioritize my feelings. Can you do that or can you not? I'm asking you to remove your ex-girlfriend from your life because it'll make me feel better. And I'm sorry, that is far beyond Instagram. Instagram is the smaller picture this is the bigger picture this is the principle the principle of the situation is you're putting your ex before me point blank period that is a deal breaker it's not just about instagram it's about the way you're handling the situation and that's it it needs to be called out the way that it that it is it is a red flag and something is off here and as you can tell i feel quite passionate about the situation i don't know why but i always did i feel like i have a podcast episode from years ago talking about this like I put out a whole podcast episode I think it was titled like social media isn't the problem in your relationship your partner is because that's exactly it it's not just about social media it's about your partner because if it's a good partner who puts you first he would say yeah it's just social media of course I'll unfollow her not this partner who's gaslighting you and saying it's just social media why do I have to unfollow her so like this is something that's always mattered to me and bothered me. So that's an old episode, but you could go back on my podcast and look. I want to say it's from 2022. So you could also just search like social media in my podcast episodes and then that one should come up. But that is all we have for today. So thank you girls so, 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 so much for listening. Before we go, please leave a review wherever you're listening. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, leave five stars and a review at the bottom of my podcast page. If you're listening on Spotify, leave five stars and answer the question box on this episode that says, what did you think of this episode? Wherever you can leave reviews, please, 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 I kindly ask that you do that. But yeah, thank you girls so much for listening. Until next time, girls. 